How's it going guys? My name's Cody and in this video I'll be giving some advice on what makes the perfect duo partner and how to find one. Plus, some tips on the most effective ways to practice with them. While the video is going to focus on duos since that's the upcoming format, don't worry. You can use these tips for squads, trios, or whatever else Epic throws at us in the future. But how'd you guys do in the Winter Royale? That increased pool prize at the last minute was definitely a surprise. Hopefully you guys earned some cash. We would love to hear that. Let us know in the comments if you played and how well you did. One more thing before we jump into it, it's going to be hard to find a duo if your rank sucks or you can't even do well in events. That's where ProGuides.com can help you out. Our selection of updated courses can teach you valuable knowledge needed to see rapid improvement. Plus, you can always schedule to play with pros in a private session for a more personalized experience. Our coaches are available 24-7 so they can help you improve at any time of the day. Like the video, subscribe, then head over to ProGuides.com to get started. Alright, so first up, what exactly makes a good duo partner? More specifically, what traits should you be looking for? One of the most essential aspects is excellent chemistry. You've got to jive well with your duo and be able to treat them like a friend. It should ideally be someone you'd enjoy spending time with outside the game. Would you go for lunch with your duo or watch a movie with them? Mongrel says that he does that with his teammates in Discord and it's a fantastic idea. It helps you relax and build a special relationship, one that you'll definitely need. Why? Because conflict is going to arise. There are going to be times where you and your duo disagree with what happened in game, but if you can't work through those issues, then nothing productive gets done. You'll learn zilch, never progress, and only more problems end up coming up. While chemistry isn't 100% needed to be successful, it certainly helps. Next, both players' skill level needs to be on par with each other. This is the unfortunate, ugly truth that needs to be accepted if you want to find the right partner. You just can't have the duo be performing at an overall worse level, at least to the point where it's continuously limiting your own performance. Notice that I did say at an overall level. That's because there are different things that you can excel at in Fortnite. You might know every tunnel and box fighting technique, but run of the mill aim. Or you could be a 300 IQ mastermind that knows everything about rotations and playing the end game, but with mediocre mechanics. Really, what you wanna do is find a good fit. Preferably, you want skill sets that can complement each other. For instance, Tifu has recently been looking for duos partners with crack mechanics. That's because he recognizes his types of skill sides more towards game knowledge and strategy rather than raw mechanics. Not to say that Tifu's mechanics are bad, but there are players out there better and faster than him. That's why he previously chose Kanata and is now duoing with controller player Scoped. Because their mechanics can win box fights and find endgame kills, while his skill set is more suited towards general strategy and decision making. Now, in most cases, it's pretty easy to tell when someone's skill level isn't up to par. Their arena points might be far behind yours, and maybe they won't have similar tournament placements. Or, you can even use your 1v1 time together to get a better picture. If you can consistently beat your duo in build fights or box fights, then they're definitely too far behind. It's okay for one player to be more cracked, but you don't want that gap to be massive. Even though it can take a while to gauge, never settle with someone if you think their skill set just isn't up to par. Instead, look for someone that can provide an equal contribution to the team or else you're just holding yourself back. Lastly, a dependable duo needs to know proper callouts and communication. I'm sure all of you know by now how useful effective comms can be. They can keep you alive in the end game when things are running hectic or help you prioritize targets and find kills. But at the same time, it's a lot harder to have two shot callers on the same team. Generally, it's a smart idea to have an in-game leader or IGL making most of the large scale decisions. Not every duo out there has an IGL, but by having one, you can avoid running into situations where you and your duo make conflicting plays. I'm going left, I'm going right, oh God. Really, you should consider all these traits when trying to find that perfect duo partner. But ultimately, your decision depends on your goals. If you just want someone to hang out with and play the occasional tournament, then who am I to say you shouldn't pick someone lower skilled? It's your choice in the end, but just know that these traits will have an impact. We talked about what makes a duo partner suitable, but what about the bad ones? What kind of players should you be avoiding when trying to find teammates? First, I'd say someone that doesn't accept their mistakes. Being able to recognize and accept mistakes is the number one tip when it comes to improving. Yet you'd be surprised at how many competitive players don't have this mentality. They'll continually blame the game or even their opponents in some cases, which is just silly. That's not what you want to see in a teammate. You want someone that'll own up to their mistakes. With that, you'll know that they're working on fixing them. Also, you don't want someone that excessively blames their team. That would be toxic in any team environment, but it's especially so in duos. Great team chemistry relies on treating the group as a whole. For instance, if your duo dies in the endgame and blames you for not being with them, the problem isn't necessarily your fault. The right partner will see the whole picture and be constructive. Because there are always two sides to a story, and it's crucial to understand both if you truly want to work through your problems. Lastly, someone that doesn't fit your goals. 
If your goal is to win money and maybe go pro one day, then you want someone that is just as determined as you. Let's say that you want to scrim five nights a week, but you ask your duo and they say only two. That's a massive difference. They're way less determined than you. If you want to reach your goals, look for someone with similar prospects. Looking at the bad traits is just as important as focusing on the good ones. Avoid these types of players and you'll end up with a better partner. So, all this talk about chemistry and good versus bad teammates. But why is that all necessary? Well, other than the immediate impact that it'll have, one aspect that's not talked about as often as it should is how you'll improve in the long run. Take Zayd and Saf for example. These two have been playing together since the very beginning, all the way back to before the summer skirmish. And all that time together has only improved their understanding of one another their play styles, their comms, and how they'll act in certain situations. Not knowing what your teammate is going to do in a specific scenario might hamper your ability to help them out. So finding the right duo and staying with them means that you can develop those vital teamwork skills. It's part of the reason why Zayd and Saf were considered favorites for winning the World Cup. And they were definitely on track. They held first place until a few misfortunate events made them finish fourth. But hey, that's still outstanding. And I think that part of their success is due to them sticking together and really developing their in-game chemistry. So if you can't find the right duo partner, you'll end up spending a lot of time constantly swapping and hoping for the best. You'll never grow those hard teamwork skills. This is just another reason why you need to look for someone that fits. Once you have a duo partner, practicing with them is of utmost importance. You can learn a lot off one another. Like your duo might know a trick or two that you don't. And hey, you might have some own techniques that are just unknown to them. But what are the most effective ways to practice? First, you should spend lots of time in creative. Regular build battling and box fighting each other is great to learn off each other. But don't just stop there. You should also schedule some box fighting matches against other duos. Here, you can work on your team play, things like calling out the right targets, pinching lone enemies, sticking near your teammate, and all around working with your duo in a way that can transfer well to real matches. Speaking of real matches, it's a must to regularly play arenas and scrims. There's only so much that creative can teach, but on the big island, you can perfect your drop spots, go over early game strategies, and get valuable end game practice together. I would say use arena matches to W key, as long as you don't care much about your rating. Aggressive gameplay is pretty much necessary if you want to do well in any event, and arenas are the best place to learn that. And outside the game, you should ideally VOD review alongside your duo any chance you get. By going through the replays of your own matches, you and your partner can spot mistakes and work towards fixing them. It may seem tedious, but not everything jumps out at you during the game. Sometimes it takes a second look and some analysis to spot the errors. And if you've got the time, you should also go over some pro gameplay together. Maybe you or your partner will spot something valuable another pro duo does, like a box fighting technique or an early game strategy. You can then pick it up and start using it yourselves. If you still think you have lots to learn, spend more time reviewing pros rather than yourself. Just go in with a critical mindset, drop some ego, and you'll learn a lot. Finally, knowing how to market yourself when searching for a duo is necessary if you want to stand out. Think of it as a job resume. You need to list your strengths, past accomplishments, experience, and what you'd bring to the team. We always see simple posts on Reddit or Discord, heck, even in Twitch chat, people looking for duos. If you're serious, it's not enough to just list your region, your platform, and your KD. Pros can go on Twitter and yak about their total earnings and recent placements, but most of us don't have those to mention. So we've got to sell ourselves. You can start by listing recent tournament placements. If you're new to the whole competitive thing and don't have any, you can at least bring up your arena rating and past experience to give them a rough idea. Then, talk about your abilities, specifically the things you shine bright at. Are you a great W keyer? Maybe you're better at endgame rotations. Can you call the shots and lead the team? Whatever you bring to the table, it's better if you put it out there so you can attract more attention. Mentioning all these things will make it more likely to find someone that shares the same goals as you. And the more convincing you can be, the more people will give you a shot. In conclusion guys, here's what you need to do to find the perfect duo partner. Look for the right traits. Someone on your skill level that you can develop a bond with. Preferably someone that communicates effectively and can either listen or make great callouts. Make sure to avoid bad teammates, like those that are quick to blame, can't admit when they're wrong, and lack your determination. These types of players will only hold you back, so stay away. When you have found that perfect duo, improve by practicing with them as often as you can. Go to creative, go to arenas, maybe even go to outside the game through VOD reviews. Just do this as often as you can. And if you're struggling to find someone that you're happy with, it might be a marketing issue. Try to sell your strengths, abilities, and past experience when searching for a duo to convince people you are the person that they want. Dude, you want me? Come on, let's duo, bro.
So that's it. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed the tips, hit us up with a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more daily vids. To support us even further, make sure to use code PROGUIDES in the item shop when making a purchase. Once again, it's your host, Cody. Follow me on Instagram at CocoMedler. I'm signing off, and I will see you all very soon. Peace out.